Today we're going to talk about some items that make us a constant and steady flow of revenue. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that make us a constant and steady flow of revenue. Things that routinely sell over and over and over again across the gambit. Things that can also sell on more than one platform, which for us is very important. We like to be able to offer items up on multiple platforms. It gives us more revenue, more chances to sell those items. Now, one area around here where no one seems to buy is Vintage 78 Records. We make a bunch of money off of these. I can get them dirt cheap, down to a quarter many times a piece. And these are prices that I get for them routinely, $34.50 on average for most of these sorts of discs. Many people have a hard time pricing them. They don't know where to go. They don't know that there's more than one site. Many people aren't aware that you can make money selling these on Amazon even. Sometimes much more than you would selling them here on eBay. There are sites that just sell records like Discogs as well. So these sorts of things I nab up all the time. It helps obviously to know who these people are, who Eddie Cantor is, know what's jazz, know which early labels to look for. All that's going to take people is time to understand it. Once you've looked up and seen many of these items over and over again, you'll understand how they work. You'll understand the better ones, hopefully, if your research is good and you'll be able to pick stuff like this and sell them over and over again. Here's another one. This one sold for the full price, $37.50. This one was a dollar, so they're not very expensive. It's in excellent condition. No sleeves, just bought from a stack of old records. That's how I buy most of the records, or I buy them in big mass quantity if I buy out someone's entire collection. Many people don't want to ship these either. You have to spend extra time. These have to go in a box with cushion and the whole works. They have to be specially boarded with cardboard. So a lot of people just don't bother. Now this is a label here that shows up locally all the time. So I do run into the same records, even these vintage ones quite often. They're usually discarded. It's not an Elvis. It's not like a Chubby Checker or a Carl Perkins or something. Most people don't think much on these earlier things, these types of things here. This is a rockabilly. It's a decent one. It's early 50s. It's a bopper as well. Another one. Full price as well, just like all the other ones. No offer was accepted on this one here. It also helps to know the types of music, the era, and other structures of it as well. This would have been available in possibly a cylinder record. There would be sheet music of most of these hits as well. The Men on the Flying Trapeze is a well-known song. It's been around for decades and decades and decades. It's been in movies, the whole works. Even in not so great condition, these still will sell. You just have to be able to grade them correctly. For those who don't know record grading, 78s are easier to grade, in my opinion, than our 45s and 33s. So that has one big advantage. Now, comic books I play with quite often, but I like the ones that are more independent, that aren't the mainstream, because most people don't know enough about those either to be effective when they're purchasing. This is Space Vixens. Now, what's special about this issue? This is issue 16. This is a 3D comic book. I love 3D comic books, so every 3D comic book out there that's reasonable price that I think I can make a few bucks on or I might want it for a collection, I buy them and I make some good money. And this came out of a massive purchase. I have probably about a nickel into each one of the comic books I bought out of this lot. So I do dig in and do look for these 3D ones. Usually if I find these sorts of 3D ones, there's a lot of alternative and indie comic books in there. Those make us quite a bit of money. I actually make probably as much off these indie ones than I do the prime like DC, Marvel, and the whole works. These sell extremely well because there was less of them printed than the mainstream comic books. So these can go up fairly quickly also. This one I sold for 70 bucks. I bought a couple of this exact same one from a huge assortment, as I said. Some of it was old dealer stock, so there's multiple issues. Now this is Gen 13, another alternative in my book. This is from the 90s, 94, and this is the limited edition number one, as well as a few other issues excellent condition primo ones we got 68 dollars shipped out the door for this lot here again i've only got a few cents in each individual comic book i bought them in a lot because the people who were selling these didn't even know who the characters were or anything like that 
knowing and studying certain specific characters, I guess, would be a, a good start in this area. One of the ones I love looking for are the early Ninja Turtles from the very first printings. I get those whenever I can. Those have skyrocketed beyond many of these sorts. Now, sheet music sells fairly well, just like the records. Many of the sheets you might find will be tied directly to vintage records. So if you know the sheet music prices, you can at least kind of judge or estimate what a record would sell for as well. It's kind of like a cross-category uh, connection there, I guess you'd say. Now, this is from 1871, and this is a gallop, like a march, almost to a jazz kind of beat to some extent. Um, this one went for the full price you see there, 95 bucks. I paid zip zero for this one. I got a huge assortment. We're selling them on a constant basis since the day that we listed some. We listed a whole mess of them, a couple thousand, I think, and they've been routinely selling over and over and over again. These items do give us a steady stream of revenue. I I sell sheet music almost every single day of the week, many times multiples across the board in sheet music or in records, labels, whatever I sell, we sell multiples of those usually on any given day of the week. We do sell a bunch of other items, obviously, besides these sorts of things, but this is kind of the bread and butter. This is steady, constant, daily revenue on all of these sorts of things. Now, quantity up is a huge reason why some of this works for us. We've been selling this sort of thing for 10 plus years no die off nothing and it's just grown every single year year over last year over last with what we're selling in these types of items here's another one this one's 2750 a 1904 large format sheet music we have nothing into this one it came along with the last one you just saw with vintage sheet music this is another one of those areas that people don't know how to research there's so many options there's so many that you won't be able to find online so if you don't know how to price them you have no idea you have have no idea what to invest in them plus you've got the amount of time so if you center in sometimes on these sorts of things you can make out like a bandit sometimes because most other people won't want to spend the time they won't know enough about it or they don't want to sink the money into something that they don't know how to market or sell now business cards is another one of those areas that we do extremely well most people see no value in a plain business card like this with just a couple names, nothing graphical on it. This one's sold for the price you see it there, plus they paid for shipping. This is a card from Pennsylvania, a college that teaches dental surgery. It's very an odd, unique item. This is from the 19th century as well. $37.50 is a very good sale. This came in a huge bulk lot of a couple cents into this. No one else saw the value in this sort of item. Here's another one of those items that no one sees a value, and it's just a card. If you don't center and you don't look, you don't see that this is from China being the most important aspect on here. You're missing what's going on in this. There's writing on the back. It's nothing special. Somebody writing down uh, the cost of some items or something. This card is marketed towards military soldiers, U.S. soldiers specifically. Uh, it's like a bar card. Uh, it's an original. It's authentic. I got 75 bucks plus someone paid shipping on it as well. This was bought again in a big bulk lot of just a bunch of junk. Most people saw no value in it. It's not a postcard. It's not technically a business card. It's much larger than that. It's like an ad card or a window card almost. Now, vintage old electronics, especially industrial, steampunkish, I mess with. This is one of those dollar or so purchases. It's some sort of old industrial clock by GE from the 1930s. I have no idea if this thing worked or anything else like that. It's just some old electronic piece. Now, we were picking an old warehouse at one point and nabbing up anything that looked cool. Everything was just dirt cheap. On average, it's a dollar or so invested in each item. It has cloth wrapped wires this thing was heavy this thing on its own weighed around 10 pounds got about 100 bucks out of this one here so i'm happy with that i have nothing into this it's just an interesting item it has a glass door in the whole works someone may have just even wanted the case because the case alone was pretty heavy and hefty another area that's constant steady revenue are buttons whether they're ladies buttons, uh, clothing buttons, utilitarian buttons, pants buttons, whatever kind of button they are, there are some that are worth money. No matter what, across the board, all different types, china buttons, stencil buttons, glass buttons, you name it, they make it. Now this one here has a center made of gutta perca and it's uh, like a vulcanized rubber and it has an impressed design 
with a wasp or bee or something in it plus the crest and the logo on there also now this one we got 75 bucks on i'm able to date them you can tell by construction material something many other folks won't know or won't want to spend the time to investigate once you understand what some of these are made out of you spend the initial time into it from that point on you should always be able to distinguish the good ones you'll know but if you don't invest that extra time that extra effort to learn something you're not going to do very well at this sort of thing Here's another unique one. This is for the United States Indian Service. This was a department of the U.S. government that handled reservations and things like that. And they wore uniforms, and this button came off one of those uniforms here. It's the real deal. Knowing how to date this button, knowing how to establish that it's real versus the fakes, there's a ton of fakes out there. There's ones that are marked with Tiffany and Company that are fake. There's a lot of Tiffany buckles that aren't really Tiffany pieces, a lot of buttons and pins and things like that now they're not gold or silver or anything like that but they're uh, modern manufacturer knockoffs basically or reproductions of the original the real deal that's why a lot of people get confused and don't mess with certain items because they don't understand how to tell the difference between the real the fake or even aged or anything along that line being able to do that is where you get the money at being able to correctly ID and establish what you got is important beyond belief if you're selling this sort of thing. If you can spend the time, once you learn it, you're done. You can move on to something else and you always be able to, again, date and understand eras and age and all that with this sort of thing. Now here's a really cute pair of vintage early 40s, 50s spaghetti style ceramic. It has little strands that look like spaghetti for their fur, uh, the pom-pom kind of looking thing on there. Very cute one even has a fly sitting on its forehead it's really cute in my opinion i actually have a video just on these sorts of things i'll have a link up to it right here if you're interested in checking it out good sale i spent a dollar on each of the dogs happy with that so that's a good return on my investment either way you go i've already paid for these over and over again we've sold a ton of dog figurines we bought a huge collection that filled our entire table i'm down to just a little tiny bin of dogs left at this point dog collectibles are something that sells for us as are all of these little figurines related to specific breeds and dogs or spaghetti related items like this in general but anyway that's what i have for you today well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Parker Brothers.